Hey, what's going on gamers? It's me, I'm Joku, I'm back, and uh, I want to do this little deck profile on Dragon Ball Super Car Game. So, I got this Invoker deck that I've been working on, and I think it's pretty cool. It's kind of like, pretty spicy, you know, and I think that when these things are really spicy, that it's kind of gonna make you wanna play the deck more because it's so spicy. So, I'm gonna start just by talking about this leader. So, this is the leader. This is uh, Invoker, Invoku, Goku, Joku. Uh, I think this is really strong leader, and I think one of the things that's kind of best to, to know that a leader is gonna be good is if it like, if leader is like really cool, really strong, and really handsome, then usually it's gonna be a good leader. Like uh, Broly Awakened Threat, really cool, really strong, and just super handsome guy, and that he was amazing leader. So I think that's usually a telltale sign. And I think one of the things that I think is most important about this leader is that. Um, He's pretty much always 15k leader. Like, there's not many cards in the game or leaders in the game that are pretty much all the time 15k from turn one onward. And that's because he has an activate battle. You can pitch extra card, give him 5k for the battle. So every time this guy is fighting, he's gonna get 5k, which is crazy. Uh, and when he's woke, when he's woke, you kind of surge woke. You stick him two cards under this guy, flip him, draw three, untap one, and then you get to use this skill two times that he has here. You can do it in main or in battle. Uh, basically, you can take your opponent's hand and look at the hand when he's turned on. And what I mean by turned on is if you have a universe seven in your battle area, then this Joku gets really turned on. So if you have a U7 in your battle area, you can look at your opponent's hand, you can take a card out of it, 30k, 5k or less, and then you draw a card, or you can grab three cards from your drop or warp multicolor extra card with different name. Anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, let's get into the deck, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. So here's our leader. All right, first and foremost, most important card in the deck. This is Tournament Power Arena. This thing, like, you want to get it out turn one if you can, but with the way that this spices, you're kind of going to plan to get it out turn two. So basically what this card does is uh, you can play it and then once per turn you can rest it and look at the top three cards and you can put them back on top or bottom in any order, but they all either have to go on top or all on bottom. So really useful for some other stuff that we're gonna get into, but we run four of these cards and you wanna see it as soon as, as possibly you can see it. Next is this guy. This is Catastrophic Blowjob. This card is so good in the game. I mean, it's just, you're basically just gonna snipe your opponent's life. And I really like this leader because it really plays like in the show. Like I feel like they did a really good job of like the way that the, the, the fight is in the show. Like he's kind of just like super defensive at the beginning and then he turns on and then he just snipes your whole life and you're like, what the heck just happened? And that's the power of Alternate Seek Mastered. So I'm running four of these cards. I think if you're running less than four of these cards with this spicy build then you're very foolish but this is the multicolor red blue extra card so the package that we're gonna run for this is we run four of this we run four of this and we run four of this now these cards work together basically we have cash star with blow job we have royal condom and we have enter's death balls so this card is the one that's gonna snipe their life. So you kind of, you you tap one when you have Invoker and you're gonna knock off a life. And if you have a six drop, you're gonna knock extra one. But this card is really good for the game. Basically, you wanna get this card in your hand as soon as possible and you're gonna start using it off your leader skill to give your leader 5K, put it in the drop. And that's kind of the plan. So you wanna have as many of these as early game as possible and get them all in your drop area. And same with these things. So this, this this decision basically it's like okay I either run four of these or I run four beans. And I think four condoms is better than four beans balls because if you have four condoms, the condoms can get warped from your drop area and you get to reveal top card of your deck and take it if it's multicolor extra card. So that's where these cards, these three cards, this package. The package of these three cards are really, really good. And I think in this deck, you should always be running four of each of the copies of these cards because one is gasoline for your leader. So like when your leader is in battle, it's just gasoline. You just drop it, you draw, you can take a life if you want. Um, but once these are in your drop area, you can do a skill on here where you're basically gonna warp one of these cards and you reveal the top card of your deck. And if it's a multicolor extra card, you can take it to your hand. So basically what you're doing with this card every turn when you tap this you're gonna set the three cards on the top of your deck and then you can start warping things from your dark area to kind of pick up cards 
from the top of your deck. So you're really refilling your hand from your tarp area. So you're really not minusing on that if you're playing and setting your deck right and you have a little luck on your side. So this card is really good. If you don't know what it does, basically you can counterplay. It costs four mana, but if you have an invoker, you can play it. And then for one energy, that's red blue. You just send something to the bottom of your opponent's deck. And then this card is amazing. It's activate battle. You can probably basically neg anything 30k um, during the battle. And uh, yeah, it's really good. If you have Invoker, you can play for one or you can tap three for it. I think it's very worth three. Uh, we play three of these negate. This is a really, really good negate. I mean, if you have the if you have the Invoker, great. If you don't, for two energy, like this is really good, especially in uh, it, it working together with uh, Dimension Magic because you can play Dimension Magic. Once you play Dimension Magic, you get your energy up and then you can use your energy to play this. And basically what does it negates an attack and it minuses 10k, two things on the board. So it's just really powerful negate and it really slows the opponent's turn down. Um, I think three of is really good because if you were to warp this and reveal this, it is a multicolor red blue, so you can take it from top of your deck. So it's just kind of, you know, getting more cards in hand. This card is really great. There's so many four drop cards or less than five that are really annoying. And basically it's free if you have Invoker or it just costs you one. So you can tap two and untap one and basically just send something back to your opponent's hand. Um, really annoying card to deal with and I just run one of this and I just run one of this because both of these you can take from your drop area with your leader skill if you need to like in a pinch um, but I don't think you're going to play them more than once and you see a lot of this deck and you may just draw them off the top so uh, this is to bounce something back this this card is good I, I would consider running two but I think one is fine because I usually just get it back from the drop and play it again if I need to um, but this card is like you tap two and you draw two and then your opponent has to whittle their hand down to 10. And I think this is a really good card, especially against hand control. Probably put another one, two of these in the side. I think this is a really, really strong card. All right, so here's where it's spicy starts. So spicy starts with this card. This card is so good. I love counter counter. So counter counter is like if they counter, right? Like they demagic or they have some kind of counter, then you play this to counter that counter. And that's like, I think that's my most favorite thing in this game is to counter a counter. I think in these card games, it's really important to figure out like what kind of cards you like to play. And I get the most exciting feeling out of when I counter a counter. So in order to do this, you have to have an extra yellow card in hand. And that's why on turn one, the goal is to charge a multicolor red, uh, blue, blue, yellow extra card in your energy. So if you can turn one at blue, yellow, that means turn two, you can use that blue to play tournament of power and you'll tap, play a red, blue, and then you just play red, blue's energy for the rest of the game. But you have that yellow to play this card and your leader is red. And then you just keep one yellow card in hand to pitch to counter the counter. So like this really stops cooler or... You know, really anything, if you need to go in with victory strike and you can get your energy back up, you can counter counter with this. It's just, it's just really, really like the really good card. Um, so then we have uh, Frost Daily Poison. I just play one of this, like it might get in there. There's a lot of cards that I just play one of. I know there's people that are like, oh, don't play one of a card. But like, if you just play one, like, okay, if I have this in my opening hand, it's going to be my energy. I can use it to pitch for my leader and like if I need it in a pinch to counterplay something, it's expensive, but I can pay it. It's not a big deal. It only needs one yellow and I'm going to have the blue. So it's not a big deal and it's going to untap anyway and I get to draw a card sometimes. So I think it's a good card, but I wouldn't play more than one of it. Now here was a big decision, the beans. So the beans, I took the beans to three. Like I was playing four, but I really think three is fine because this card you pitch a lot off your leader card. A lot of times like this is the extra card you have. And if it's gonna be a decision between this and Royal Condom, like I'd rather have Royal Condom because Royal Condom has a skill from the drop area that's gonna replace itself. So I would probably, I just playing three of these beans, uh, one shiny one. I actually like this art better, but I know this one's expensive. So I wanna keep one in my deck to show like, oh, maybe I have expensive beans. Uh, really good card, you know, untap and give your leader 5k, which comes in handy sometimes when we're just trying to live through a turn. All right, Dick Magic. This get, this card is is so good. This is, I think, the best negate in the game. It's like, you know, it costs one, untap two. It's just amazing. Any blue leader. So you have access because your leader is red and blue. 
um, you can also pay for it with a life and like, you know, if you pay for it with a life and they cooler you and you have the two mana up, you can use the, uh, all my resistance encounter the cooler and you still get your energy back up and they don't get to play cooler and it's really good. So this negate is just like best negate in the game. In my opinion, it's foolish enough to run four. I think it's just, it's just free energy and, um, yeah, it's really good. Uh, this Master Roshi, it just costs one. You, you don't have Warriors of Universe 7 with this leader, so I just played two of these. It's one yellow, and it turns the leader on. So, you know, this one is probably going to turn on the leader a little bit more than this one, because this one, I think, is, like, more strong. So Goku's going to get more turn on, because this one is more strong. But what I mean by turn on is when you're awakened and you have a Universe 7 in play, you can do his skill where you get to look at your opponent's hand. So this is a way of just getting a Universe 7 out with that yellow mana that you have if you're not using it, and it kind of gets something out there for your leader skill. Uh, great card, really expensive now, Apex of Power. I mean, this card, I think, is a lot better in this deck when you're playing All Mighty Resistance because if they counter this attack, then, like, you can counter their counter and then you're in there. But I don't really use this card that much. Like, a lot of times I actually use it for my Awakening because that way the card is in the battle area and it looks really good. And then my opponent has to be like, oh my god, this guy is charging his secret through air. He ha must have such strong cards. And then they're scared. So I think this is a really good card to use for your awakening. Uh, it also looks really nice in your energy if you want to put it in your energy. Um, but I don't play it that much. But when I do the, the opening, you have to identify the opening to play this card. When you do, it's like they're, they're screwballed. Uh, so I do a super combo split. I play two of these bears. I like to have one SPR and one regular. I actually like the re art in the regular one more, but I know the SPR is more rare. So sometimes when I draw into this, it's like nice. Basically what this guy does, he's blue red. So he gives you a rival for cooler. And uh, you, when you combo with him defensively, you can untap a blue red energy. So kind of useful to get those things up. Um, and also, you know, then you just tap one, you can play cooler and add some pressure and cooler will neg their board. So, um, they're going to get, you, you can just pick two things and neg them 10 K and just kind of like clear their board a little bit. And even if you were to, you know, like have one super combo cooler, cooler, you can bring two coolers in with red energies and just really like give them a sour day. So I think cooler is a good combination with that. It adds some board pressure and for the end game, it's really good. Now the other one that I play. I play to Zamasu. Zamasu is a really good super combo because he rests something. So like they can, and they're not really going to expect it in this build. Usually, I don't think unless you charge it, then they know you have it. But if you're playing this leader, they're usually not going to be like, oh, he's playing Zamasu. I mean, it's a possibility because you're blue, but it's kind of unlikely. So when they swing with some battle card, you just rest their leader and like really slow their turn down. And when you're comboing with this Zamasu, it gives you the blue yellow to play this Goku hit. And Goku hit is like, this is maybe my favorite looking card in this deck. Um, this Goku hit is really nice because he's a rival, one blue energy, and you get the arrival cost with the blue yellow here with the Zamasu. And when you play the Goku hit, uh, he basically is like a universe seven. So he turns on your leader and, and Goku is really turned on very much by hit. If you have watched the show, you know, he has a big time hard on for hit. So you just arrival this guy, he turns on your leader big time, and then you can take cards from your opponent's hand and you get a blocker. Like this card is great, you know, block, block. Um, I put three of them and it bumped my deck up to 52. So like, this is one of the extra cards that I may cut, but I really like to have this in my energy area turn one. This is the ideal turn one energy play because it's blue yellow and it looks really, really good. And then that way you get to look at this card the whole game and it's beautiful and it's gonna make you really happy. So I've run three of the Goku hit. I think it's a really great card. Now here's the boy. This is this boy is the best. And this is the boy that is why we can't run yellow. So before this deck couldn't really run yellow because you needed all red blue energy. But now that we have this lad, it's very, very easy to run one extra color because what this guy does is basically you play him and they're like, oh, I'm not going to counterplay him because he's a three energy. Or they're like, oh my God, he's so dangerous. I'm going to counterplay him. And it's turn five. So you're like, I don't care. I have all my resistance. Sorry, pal. And then you counter their counter and he still gets to play. And when you play him, he's fr he's like the most free guy ever. So remember how I was like, oh, you want to get these catastrophic blowjobs into the drop really fast? So you want to get them into the drop and you want to warp them. Even if you're not getting cards off tournament of power, like you want to get all your catastrophic blows in the warp because what you can do turn three or turn five 
is you play this guy for three. You play this guy for three, they try and counter it, you say, oh, sorry, I got all my resistance, you counter, counter, and then they're like, oh, crap, and everything's good, so he's in play. And now, when you have him, if you have this six drop in your hand, it's free. It's like actually more than free. Like it costs your, de your deck has to pay you to play this card. It's insane. So you basically go to your drop area, you take, or your warp, you take two cards from your warp, which you're going to take this catastrophic blowjob. Every time it's going to be catastrophic blowjob. You take two of those because you warp two of them. And then you play this card on top of this card. Now, when this card comes into play, you take three of your energy away and you put three energy back in active mode. Now, if you happen to have another one of these, you can play another one of these for three energy. And then you warp two cards from your DARP area because all these cards can warp themselves. That's why you play 12 of them because you want to warp all these cards. You need to warp at least eight or you can warp at least eight. And then when you warp, you pay, you take two cards from your warp and you evolve. Now you have two of these guys on the board. Yeah, okay. Now what happens? Oh, it just so happens I have another one of these rival Seeker Son Goku. So I play another one because I untap three energy and then I do it again. And then, oh my goodness, I have another one of these boys. So I play another one of these boys and then I do it again. So if you have eight of these cards in your hand, on turn five, you can play four of these cards. It's possible because every time this guy comes in, he untaps three new energy and then those three new energy get used to play this card. And if you have another one, he's gonna untap three. So it just keeps playing itself. And what this guy does is when he's in the battle area, when an opponent loses a life damage, he adds an extra life damage. So if you use one catastrophic blow, it's gonna knock one life, but this one's gonna make it knock two, this one's gonna make it knock three, this one's gonna make it knock four, and this one's gonna make it knock five. So if you have four of these guys in play and you use two catastrophic blowjob, that's six life. If you have four of them in play and you have three energy up and you use three catastrophic blow, that's seven life it's probably gonna kill them. Unless they're at eight life by turn five, which I would say is very unlikely. So that's kind of like the move with this. This card is just so good. Like it made this deck so strong, it's insane, I think. Um, especially because you can now play another color in it. And that brings me, oh, also this guy is good for your arrival because if you have a red blue in your energy, then you don't have to pay his combo cost. So he's basically another free 10k that also gives you a rival for cooler. So it's like really crazy uh, combination. It's really like the perfect combination. So this is my last spicy. I like this card. I think it's. The, I think this card and Zamasu are the best combination in the game, actually, for control. Like this, this combination for control, I think, is better than anything else. Uh, shout out to my sensei Miguel because he's the one that kind of taught me about this. I know a lot of people know about, it, but Miguel, I think, is the best at cards in the world. So this card is like you combo with it and you rest something, and then when you rest something, you get opening, and you only need one yellow energy to play Bergamot. So Bergamot comes in and he's like really ferocious puppy doge you play him this puppy doge comes in and he's screaming at the tip of his lungs and then he just rests two of your opponent's energy like what two energy just rested for you're paying two and you're gonna have the energy um so this is my spicy i think it's really makes this spicy deck uh, also my other leader i like to put her next to goku because she's not gonna turn goku on but she's like casting spells the whole time so i think she's really good to have on with the side um, now, I know what you're saying. I know the thought is like, oh my god, what the heck? Why are you not playing any um, Vegeta? Why don't you have any Vegeta Invoker? And I have a really simple answer for a question. I think it's because the Invoker Vegeta is um, trash. I think that card's really not that good. I think it's like kind of like a butt card. Um, and the reason I don't play it is because like the card just can't get killed. Like there are things, uh, right? Like once you turn off Invoker and here's the argument, right? Like you pay three on turn three to play him. And then once he's out, like you don't have any energy and then you might dimension magic to get back to energy, but then you just have two energy. And if they take away the Invoker skill somehow with like Vegeta's final flash or something that just kills a card with barrier, then like you're kind of screwed, right? Like your whole Invoker plan doesn't work. The Invoker cards are good, but they're worth the amount of energy that they cost. So like sometimes you just have to pay what things are worth to get a value out of them and not have to rely on some Invoker skill. And then on turn five, when you get your six drop out, like you just blow the job their whole life away. 
So that's pretty much the deck. Um, yeah, I stand by my statement that uh, Vegeta is trash. I think he's getting a lot better in the new manga. So if you're reading the manga, I think Vegeta is going to be a lot stronger. But right now, he's still trash, so I don't play him. Um, and then I'll just do my side deck really quick. Um, so basically, in the side deck, uh, we have just just two pieces of trash. In case there's an opening, like if we see a if we see a game where it's like, all right, they have no way of dealing with this, then he's strong, and I'll play him, and I'll throw in the sleepy boy techniques because they're good. Um, if I really need the counter counters, I'll add this in just to get some more of that. This is like I don't think this card is great, but I have it in here just in case I like in one game I'm like, oh yeah, I could definitely play this. Um, this card is amazing. This card is so good, especially with how many counters there are. It's like, if they were going to topo you and you play this, then, like, they got to pitch three, which is, like, that's not going to be good for them. Um, I think this is just a good tech. I learned this also from my Sensei Miguel, but because, like, you can counter and then you can shuffle cards back in the deck. So this is a really good way to get rebrands, like, back into your opponent's deck. So I think it's a good side tech. And um, this card is, like, I think this is the funniest card in the game, so I'm going to put this in every single one of my side decks because you basically, like, you play this card and then, like, you state a card and you're, like, you can't play this, like, next turn. And it has deflect. So, like, you just play this guy and you just, like, shut up whatever they were going to do. It's like, oh, sorry, uh, you wanted to play three energy rival seeker? Maybe next year, pal. <laughs> And then you play this guy, and then they, they're magic aboard, and there's, like, nothing they can do because of his magical seal, and they're screwed. So I think this is a really funny card. I might even bump it to four and take out these cards because I think they're trash. But um, this card's also pretty good. It's expensive, though. I think this is only worth it if you're playing Invoker, and that's why I have it in the sideboard. But this is really what the sideboard is about. Uh, this card is the best. Anyway, that's my deck profile. I hope you guys like it. Um, I can do more of these. If this is something you're interested in, feel free to leave some comments in the below. And, you know, if you have problems with the way that I'm building my deck, you know, please feel free to tell me about it. Oh, yeah, this is also a good sidecar. I think sometimes, like, this will get you your energy for your, or the cards in your drop area for your victory strike cost. So sometimes you can just add this if you're like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to victory strike this guy. Put this in the deck, and then it's just a free pitch. Um, but yeah, so that's my dick profile. I hope you guys like it. Uh, I'm playing more Dragon Ball Super Card game. I'm also uh, streaming on Twitch now every other Thursday. So if you ever want to tune in to Twitch, come on by, say hi. Uh, don't forget to smoosh that subscription button. I think I'm going to start doing some more of these dick profiles. So if there's any leaders like you want to see or any cards you're interested in or things you want to see built or ideas about stuff, I'm happy to build it and talk about it. But uh, I got inspired by my sensei Miguel. He started making some dick profiles and I wanted to make my dick profile because I have my dick box and this is my most shiny dick box. So I put my favorite dick in it. And that's uh, that's just how the story goes. So I'm little Joe, uh, Joku, I'm back. And this was my uh, Dragon Ball Super Power Game video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.